Hello everyone, today we are going to take a look at the Asteroid Library, a set of models and tools useful to create vast asteroid fields in a real engine. All models are high poly meshes that take advantage of the Nanite system of Unreal 5, and they come in three different flavors, uh, Mineral, Fragment and Byron, each one with its own visual style and dedicated material. In order to scatter asteroids around the scene, you can take advantage of the asteroid field blueprints that will enable you to procedurally create and control the shape, the size and the density of the field and the objects inside it. A system of volumetric materials come alongside the rest of the package in order to make the scene more interesting. Let's see how to use the blueprints. There are three asteroid field blueprints, globular, arc and linear, each one with its own shape. We would see the archetype for this example. Once you place a blueprint in the scene, it will create a field based on a default parameter configuration. The parameters can be edited in the details panel. You notice that there are two different parameter sections for asteroids and clusters. Basically, each cluster contains the asteroids, and the clusters are the centers where the actual asteroids are scattered around. In the same way, clusters are scattered around the asteroid field. In the asteroid section, you can control the number of asteroids. This is the number of asteroids for each cluster. The asteroid distance parameter controls how far is each asteroid from one another. In the same way, the cluster distance controls how far is each cluster from the field center or the field baseline. The distance distribution controls the density of asteroids or clusters over distance. In the case of a cluster, Higher values produce a very high density near the core and a very low density near the edge. The value of 1.0 generates a linear distribution, while 0.5 produces a constant distribution. Values that are lower than 0.5 will scatter more asteroids near the edge than near the core, and finally values that are close to 0 would produce a bubble of asteroids, dense on the edge and empty in the center. The method that I used to create the asteroid fields in the example maps is placing three or four asteroid blueprints of the same type in the same location and dedicate each one of them to a set of asteroids of different sizes. Here you can see that I named the blueprints after the dedicated sites, small, medium and large. In this example I place hundreds of small asteroids per cluster and only a few big ones. The last section of parameters is dedicated to meshes and material. You can assign up to four meshes to the asteroid field. By default, the blueprint will use the default material assigned to the meshes. However, you can change the material by unchecking the default material box in the same section. Each material can be further edited in order to change its visual appearance. If you want to add volumetric materials, you can use one of the two dedicated blueprints. The simple cloud is intended to create a very light fog, while the self-shadowed can be used to create much denser clouds. The self-shadowed cloud needs to be linked to a directional light object in the scene in order to function correctly. The linking can be done by using the pickup button directly in the editor. Both blueprints use a volumetric fog component. As you can see in the example maps, there is an exponential fog object with a volumetric fog option enabled. The component in itself is invisible, as it is placed very low in the scene, it has a very big negative Z value, and a very low density and fall off as well. Keep in mind that for large space scenes you almost certainly need to raise the view distance as the default value is quite low.